With the recent terrorist attacks and mass shootings, having the right gear and skills to stabilize patients is critical should an event occur in your workplace or just in everyday life. In this video, we'll cover a kit that is small enough and easy to carry in your backpack or on your person to make sure you'll be ready as seconds matter when help is minutes away. You can show your support for this channel by clicking the like button, sharing on social media, providing feedback in the comments section, and don't forget as a subscriber to click the bell icon below to get updates. Enjoy the video. In this video, we'll review the gunshot wound kit from Dr. Joseph Alton and Nurse Amy Alton of the Doom and Bloom YouTube channel. Nurse Amy has been working on building various medical kits for different needs for years, and we'll go over the items in this kit one by one. Also, at the end of the video, I'll talk about some additional free training tools that are invaluable resources, so stick around to the end. So, having said that, here's a quick overview of this bag. This is a gunshot wound kit that weighs only 2 pounds. The bag is a Voodoo Tactical EMT pouch, which is very durable with heavy zippers. When you purchase this kit from Dr. Joseph Alton and Nurse Amy's website, you have the color choices of Coyote, OD Green, Red, Woodland Camo, and Multicam. The great thing about this bag is that while it's small, it's easily portable and can be used for hunting, a gun range bag, or hiking and camping. We'll start on the outside where there are the easy to access items. We've got a red Sharpie marker to use with the combat casualty card, which we'll discuss momentarily. Also, if you've applied a tourniquet to the patient, write a T on their forehead to alert others that may come behind you to help that a tourniquet has been applied to this patient. Red paracord bracelet with a whistle, CPR mask, which features a one-way valve breathing barrier, which protects a rescuer by preventing direct contact with the patient's mouth, and features a printed illustration to indicate correct use. One curved hemostat, or Kelly clamp, which is great if you can observe where the patient is bleeding from and you can see the artery or vessel. These can be used to clamp the injured artery or vessel to stop bleeding. One bandage scissors, or EMT shears. They're great for cutting clothes for exposing wounds, and it has a safety blunted edge at the end so you don't end up injuring someone when cutting off clothes. All right, so let's take a look inside the bag. Now, the great thing about this pouch is that it has two elastic bands that allows you to open the bag up and it prevents it from flopping over, and this is intentional. There's a combat casualty card, and this is good to use once you have the wound taken care of and the patient stabilized. You can document on the card where the injury happened and what were the vital signs, what you did to the patient and what actions you actually performed. Israeli bandage or emergency bandage. These are in a sterile bandage. Inside is a pad, elastic wrap, and a clip. While it's not necessarily a tourniquet, it will create pressure over the wound. Use these after you've stopped the bleeding and you want to ensure the bleeding won't start again. Tourniquet. This is to be used after you've exhausted all your steps to stop the bleeding and you still cannot get it to stop. You have to be careful using these things though as they can damage the patient. This kit comes with two options that you can choose from, a soft tee and a cat tourniquet. Two sterile gauze bandages. These can be used to pack a wound for compression and also to be used after you've stabilized a patient and you need to dress a wound. A number 10 scalpel. The scalpel is best used to remove jagged tissue when closing a wound, to remove debris within a wound or to puncture abscesses. This can be used in chest wounds when making a hole for chest tubes and drainage. Now, obviously this is a very specialized piece of equipment and if you don't have the proper training and skills, it's not advisable that you use this to make incisions in the chest. This is really not for the common layman, but should someone else come along that has the skills, this is a great tool to have. H&H pneumothorax chest decompression needle. Again, this is definitely another one of those specialized tools you'll need to have training on to properly use. Celox A. This is a syringe which can be injected deeply into the wound. This is great for gunshots or knife stabbings as it allows you to get down to the place where the damaged artery may be bleeding and you can stop it. Nasopharyngeal airway tube with lube. ABD pad which is a highly absorbent dressing that provides padding and protection for large wounds. Double chest seal. You need two in the event you have two holes where the bullet has entered and exited. The great thing about these is that they have instructions on the side to show you how to properly use them. Use your gauze pads to clean down the area first to ensure this will be able to stick properly to the patient. All right, let's flip the pouch around and check out the other side. We've got four Venom brand black nitrile gloves. Again, these are powder-free, non-latex, hypoallergenic. These are the first things you want to put on for personal protection when helping the patient. Alcohol and betadine antiseptic wipes. These are great to use to clean your hemostats and bandage scissors before you use them. The betadine is great for when you've got the bleeding under control and you want to put on a dressing on the wound. 
Mylar blanket. These are awesome to keep the patient warm and to prevent shock. When a person is losing blood, there's a strong chance they'll go into shock. Two ammonium inhalants. If someone has passed out, you might want to try to wake them up. Just pop these and there's a horrible scent that will come out and just quickly whiff it under their noses. Obviously, this is for someone that is breathing. If they're not, that's when you'll be doing CPR. Face mask. Again, this is another item you want for your personal protection to ensure you don't contract any diseases while working on the patient. This prevents getting blood into your nose and mouth. Adhesive tape. This is latex free and hypoallergenic. You would use this after you've stopped the bleeding and you want to dress a wound along with the sterile dressings in the kit. H and H dressing. It looks like a tiny little square. While it's small and compressed, if you open the bag, it turns into a giant pile of gauze. This is perfect to stop bleeding. Combine this with your gloves and apply pressure to the wound. 80 to 90% of bleeding is stopped by compression. A kit like this would be a practical investment to have on you for those just in case emergencies that unfortunately are becoming more and more common. I don't think you're going to be able to find a better deal at this level of quality and price point. I'll put the link in the description section below if you'd like to purchase this setup or if you'd like to pick up individual components from this kit. Also, if you have any comments, please post them in the description section below as Nurse Amy will often respond on these videos when she has the time. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned a free resource. The website Boundary University has free courses that anyone can sign up for. It has videos and documentation that teaches you many of the basics that an ENT has to learn. There's also websites obviously like the American Red Cross. Again, I'll post those links in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like or share on social media. And as always, please provide feedback or comments below as I learned so much from the YouTube community. As always, be safe out there.